It's been called many things. The Pearl of the Orient, the City of Contrasts, the meeting point of East and West. It's a place where tradition and progress rub shoulders, where the old and the new live cheek by jowl. A place whose six million population have built for themselves one of Asia's most dynamic economies and a lifestyle that's the envy of the world. It's Hong Kong. But while Hong Kong has emerged as one of the most important financial and commercial centers of Asia, this very success has brought in its wake one major problem. An insatiable demand for more land. At the root of it all is topography. The mountainous surroundings put a very firm limit on the expansion and growth of the urban areas inland. So Hong Kong has always used reclamation from the sea to provide more room for expansion. With the result that today more than 25% of Hong Kong's urban area occupies land which was once below the sea. In 1988 the Hong Kong government announced Metro Plan, a sweeping proposal to transform the city by the year 2011 into a better organized more efficient and more desirable place in which to live and work. It's a proposal which calls for new land and some 1250 hectares of this are earmarked to come from the sea using more than 70 million cubic meters of fill annually. That's roughly enough to fill the entire area of Hong Kong's Happy Valley District every year. Much of the task of ensuring that this work caused the minimum of disruption was done in this purpose-built laboratory using a scale model of the harbor and the latest computer simulation techniques. The final outcome will be to join Stonecutters Island to the mainland. But this poses several major problems, not least of them relocating all the businesses on the old waterfront which would find themselves hundreds of meters inland. The answer was to proceed in stages. The first one of which, phase one, carried out by Ham, consisted of creating an artificial island off Chengsha Wan, and then reclaiming the areas south of Lychee Kok and west of Tai Kok Choi, so that all the businesses needing waterfront access could be moved as quickly as possible. Traditionally, land has been reclaimed from the sea using fill from the hillsides. But for many years now, it's been recognized that this is a far from ideal method. It's slow, dirty, noisy, unsightly, and it places enormous strains on Hong Kong's already overburdened road network. It's to dredge the fill material from deep beneath the seas around Hong Kong. But they are in fact extremely specialized vessels. Floating communities hard at work 24 hours a day. Their crews use highly sophisticated computers, completely integrated satellite navigation systems, and electronic survey equipment capable of putting a rice bowl anywhere on the surface of the earth with an accuracy measured in centimeters all essential for maximum efficiency and safety in Hong Kong's busy shipping lanes. Hong Kong's harbor is lined with a layer of mud which averages 10 to 12 meters thick to lay bare a solid base for the reclamation to sit on. Because the water they would be working in was so shallow that the dredgers would often be in the mud rather than on it, Ham's engineers redesigned the cooling water inlets on their ships and moved them some two meters upwards. Each dredger can suck up as much as 7,000 cubic meters of seafloor material and transport it many kilometers 
with a minimum of interruptions for maintenance. A borrow area was allocated by the Hong Kong government with the right quality of sand, 40 to 50 metres down, off the Nine Pins, a group of uninhabited islands to the far east of Hong Kong, more than 20 kilometres from the reclamation site. Before dredging itself begins, seabed levels are monitored using the online visualisation system and the dredge lines are fixed in place. Then the trailing suction arms are lowered onto the sea floor and the massive onboard pumps started up to draw the sand into the dredger's hoppers where it's drained of its seawater. Once a full load is aboard, the suction arms are raised and the ship sets sail for the reclamation site. If the load is to be dumped in a position which is below the dredger's draft line, then it's simply released through a system of doors in the bottom of the hull. This can be done in a matter of minutes. For shallower sites, however, the sand is remixed with seawater and sprayed onto the reclamation, a reversal of the original dredging method, which can be used to pump fill material as much as two kilometers inland, but which takes 90 minutes or so to complete. Using this method, one dredger working alone would complete one cycle from the Nine Pins to West Kowloon and back in about eight hours. For the West Kowloon project, though, Ham used as many as five dredgers. For a major part of the work, a rehandling basin close to the reclamation was used. The dredgers would each dump their fill into this basin and then, while they went back to the nine pins for more, this fill was sprayed onto the reclamation using a stationary cutter suction dredger. This procedure resulted in a saving in cycle time of about one and a half hours per vessel, and also meant that work on the whole reclamation process could continue non-stop 24 hours a day. It's this sort of speed and efficiency which is the reason behind Ham's methodology and the hallmark of its success. And to give some idea of just how efficient it is, each dredger load of sand is equivalent to 2,000 full 10-ton trucks. And a convoy of 2,000 10-ton trucks would stretch 25 kilometers. Ham was transporting as many as 12 dredger loads every 24 hours. That's nearly 25,000 truckloads, 300 kilometers of road space. While Ham's main involvement in Hong Kong is with the West Kowloon reclamation, the company is also heavily committed to work on the new airport under construction at Chek Lam Kok and to its related infrastructure works projects like the fixed crossing and major drainage works. Although Ham is best known for its work afloat, it's increasingly making its presence felt in civil engineering projects ashore. The method used is called deep compacting and involves inserting vibrators into the sand once it's in place and using these literally to shake it down to form a firm substrate. Deep compacting enabled Ham to consolidate some 20 hectares of reclamation so tightly that they're already built on. Like the 18 months it actually took to finish phase one, which was planned to take two years. Like the wealth generated by Ham's work in West Kowloon, who knows how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of square meters of commercially usable floor space at some 500 plus US dollars per square foot. The Pearl of the Orient unwinds at the close of another busy day. Ham's dredgers are out there, working quietly and unobtrusively, doing their bit to make Hong Kong a better and a bigger place.